what's up everybody this is tech g back with another video and in this video i'm going to be explaining to you the differences between the surface web the deep web and the dark web so let's get into it the internet this is a vast and complex network of interconnected systems hosting a staggering amount of information. However, most people only interact with a small portion of it. And the internet can be divided into three main layers. You have the surface web, the deep web, and the dark web. And each of these layers serves different purposes and has varying levels of accessibility and content. So in this video, we're going to explore what each of these layers are, how they differ, and the implications of using them. All right, so let's begin by talking about the surface web. So the surface web, which is sometimes referred to as the visible web or the index web, this is a part of the internet that is easily accessible through standard web browsers like Google Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. And this is the part of the internet that most people are familiar with and use on a daily basis. It includes websites, blogs, social media platforms, online stores, and other content that search engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo index and display in their search results. All right, so let's talk about the characteristics of the Surface Web. So first characteristic is it is indexed by search engines. So the Surface Web is made up of websites that are indexed by search engines. This means that search engines have crawled these websites, cataloging their content so it can be found through search queries. Then the Surface Web is also easily accessible. So the Search Web is easily accessible to anyone with an internet connection and a web browser, and there are no special tools or permissions that are needed to access this part of the internet. Another characteristic is that of commercial and public content. So the surface web primarily consists of commercial websites, news sites, social media platforms, online stores, and public information. It is designed for public consumption of content that is typically safe and legal to access. And then also the surface web is limited in scope. So while the surface web contains a vast amount of information, it only represents a small fraction of the entire internet. In estimates, they suggest that the surface web only makes up about 5% or less of the total content available online. All right, so next let's go over some examples of surface web content. So we have news websites like CNN, BBC, and the New York Times. You have social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Online stores like Amazon, eBay, and Etsy. And blogs, forums, and personal websites. These all make up the surface web. Next, let's quickly talk about the limitations of the surface web. So while the surface web is extensive and useful for everyday purposes, it does have its limitations. So search engines, they can only index content that is publicly accessible and follow specific web standards. And as a result, a significant portion of the internet remains hidden from search engines and is not available on the surface web. So this is where the deep web comes into play, which we'll talk about next. All right, so let's talk about the deep web. So the deep web, this is the part of the internet that is not indexed by search engines and is therefore not accessible through standard search queries. It is much larger than the surface web and contains a vast amount of information that is not meant for public consumption. And the deep web includes content that is hidden behind paywalls, login forms, and other access restrictions. All right, so let's talk about some of the characteristics of the deep web. So once again, it is not indexed by search engines. So the deep web is composed of content that search engines cannot or do not index. And this includes private databases, subscription-based services, and other content that requires specific credentials to access. Also, access to deep web content is typically restricted and requires specific credentials, such as a username or password or payment for a subscription. And once again, this layer of the internet is not designed for public consumption. Another characteristic is that of legitimate and useful content. So the deep web, it hosts a vast amount of legitimate and useful content, including academic databases, medical records, legal documents, and private communications. It also includes internal networks for businesses and government agencies. And also many deep web pages are dynamically generated in response to specific queries or inputs, making them difficult for search engines to index. All right, so let's quickly go over some examples of deep web content. So some examples will be online banking accounts and financial records, subscription-based content like academic journals, streaming services and news websites, private databases such as medical records or legal documents, internal networks for businesses, schools and government agencies, and email accounts and private messaging platforms. 
All right, so moving on, let's talk about why the deep web actually matters. So the deep web, this plays a crucial role in maintaining privacy and security on the internet. It allows individuals and organizations to store and share sensitive information without exposing it to the public. So for instance, personal medical records, financial information, and confidential business documents are all part of the deep web. Without the deep web, it will be challenging to keep such information secure from unauthorized access. However, the deep web's privacy and restricted access, this can also create challenges. So for instance, it is more difficult to search for specific information within the deep web and accessing certain content may require multiple layers of authentication. Despite these challenges, the deep web is an essential part of the internet's infrastructure, supporting critical functions for individuals, businesses, and governments. All right, so this brings us to the dark web. So the dark web, this is a small intentionally hidden portion of the deep web that is not only unindexed by search engines, but also requires special software to access it. It is a part of the internet that is deliberately concealed from the public and is often associated with illegal activities and anonymity. However, it is important to note that the dark web is not inherently illegal or dangerous. It is simply a tool that can be used for very purposes, both good and bad. All right, so let's talk about some of the characteristics of the dark web. And once again, this requires special software to access it. So accessing the dark web requires special software such as Tor, which stands for the Onion Router, or I2P, which stands for Invisible Internet Project. And these tools, they anonymize user activity and hide the IP addresses of both users and websites, making it difficult to trace their activities. Then there's the aspect of anonymity. So the dark web is designed to provide a high level of anonymity to its users. And this anonymity can be used for both legitimate and illegitimate purposes, making the dark web a haven for those seeking privacy or those engaged in illegal activities. Now, while not all content on the dark web is illegal, it is often associated with illegal activities such as drug trafficking, weapon sales, human trafficking, and cybercrime. In marketplaces on the dark web, they may sell illicit goods and services that are not available on the surface web or deep web. And then also the dark web hosts what are called hidden services. And these are websites that cannot be accessed through standard web browsers and do not have easily recognizable URLs. Instead, these websites use encrypted addresses ending in dot onion or similar extensions. And here are some examples of dark web content. So you have black markets that sell illegal drugs, weapons, and stolen data. There are forums for hackers and cyber criminals. There are anonymous communication platforms for whistleblowers and activists. You can get counterfeit goods and forged documents. And then there's human trafficking and exploitation services. Now, while the dark web is often associated with illegal activities, it also serves legitimate purposes. So for example, the dark web provides a platform for individuals living in oppressive regimes to communicate and share information without fear of government surveillance or retaliation. So journalists, whistleblowers, and political dissidents, they often use the dark web to expose corruption and human rights abuses. Also, activists and journalists, they may use the dark web to communicate securely with sources, protecting their identities and the information they share. And cybersecurity professionals and researchers, they may explore the dark web to monitor cyber threats, track criminal activities, and gather intelligence on emerging risks. All right, so let's talk about some of the risks and dangers of using the dark web. So while the dark web does have legitimate uses, it also poses significant risks. So accessing or engaging in illegal activities on the dark web, this can result in severe legal consequences, including arrest, prosecution, and imprisonment. And the anonymity of the dark web, this makes it a breeding ground for scams and fraud. So users, they may fall victim to fake marketplaces, phishing attacks, or other fraudulent schemes. Also, the dark web is rife with malware, ransomware, and other malicious software. So users who download files or interact with certain sites may inadvertently infect their devices with harmful software. And despite the anonymity offered by the dark web, law enforcement agencies, they actively monitor and infiltrate dark web marketplaces and forums to combat illegal activities. And users who believe that they are anonymous, they may still be traced and identified.
All right, so let's move on to talk about some ethical and legal implications of exploring the web's layers. So understanding the ethical and legal implications of exploring the surface web, deep web, and dark web, this is essential for responsible internet use. And each layer of the internet has its own set of rules, risks, and responsibilities. So let's talk about the ethical considerations real quick. So the deep web and dark web, they offer privacy and anonymity but this can be a double-edged sword. While these features protect users' rights to privacy, they can also be exploited by those engaging in illegal and unethical activities. Also, researchers, journalists, and cybersecurity professionals may explore the deep web and dark web for legitimate purposes. However, they must do so responsibly, ensuring that their activities do not contribute to or support illegal actions. And then the surface web, this is designed to be accessible to the general public, while the deep web and dark web contain more restricted and sensitive content and users, they must consider whether they have a legitimate need to access certain information and whether doing so could have ethical or legal consequences. All right, moving on, let's talk about the legal considerations. So while accessing the deep web is generally legal, engaging in illegal activities on the dark web is not. And users, they must be aware of the legal risk associated with their actions and the potential consequences of breaking the law and the global nature of the internet. This creates jurisdictional challenges for law enforcement. So activities that are illegal in one country may be illegal in another. And tracking and prosecuting criminals across borders, this can be difficult. And also law enforcement agencies, they act actively monitor the dark web for illegal activities. So users who engage in criminal activities, they may be subject to investigation, arrest, and prosecution. All right, so let's talk about how you can navigate the web safely. So given the complexities and risk associated with the different layers of the internet, it is essential to take steps to navigate the web safely. So first thing you wanna do is use secure browsers. So for everyday browsing on the surface web, use secure browsers that offer privacy features such as HTTPS encryption and ad blockers. You wanna enable two-factor authentication. So you wanna enable this on your online accounts to add an extra layer of security, and this is especially important for accounts that store sensitive information. You want to be cautious with your downloads, so avoid downloading files from untrusted sources as they may contain malware or other harmful software. You want to use VPNs because they can help protect your online activity by encrypting your internet connection and masking your IP address. You want to stay informed, so you want to keep up to date with the latest cybersecurity news and best practices to protect yourself from emerging threats. You don't want to engage in illegal activities on the dark web or elsewhere because the risks far outweigh any potential benefits and the legal consequences, they can be severe. And then you want to report any illegal content. So if you encounter illegal content on the internet, you want to report it to the appropriate authorities because this helps combat cybercrime and protect vulnerable individuals. All right, so to wrap all of this wonderful information up, the surface web, deep web, and dark web, they represent different layers of the internet, each with its own unique characteristics, uses, and challenges. The surface web is the most accessible and widely used layer, while the deep web hosts a vast amount of hidden and restricted content. And the dark web, although often associated with illegal activities, can also serve legitimate purposes for those seeking privacy and anonymity. Now, understanding these layers is crucial for navigating the internet safely and responsibly. And while the surface web offers a a wealth of information for public consumption, the deep web and dark web require careful consideration and caution. But by following best practices for internet security and staying informed about the risks, users, they can protect themselves and make the most of what the internet has to offer.